then mm, yes so we, we are among the linear algebra just demonstrate what uh, we did last uh nini sorry maybe there was some issues but i don't know so you are dealing with matrices so a matrix like this one a b c d e f the order of this matrix this one here the order will be given by basically this we say these ones are the one these are the rows the one that are standing at the columns so the order for this one will be given we always start with the rows then you go to the what to the column so this one the same as uh, how many rows are here two by three only that so that is the order of that matrix uh, basically it is as easy as that the order of a matrix the order of a matrix is given by that there the order of a matrix is given by that two by three the number of rows then we went to operations to operations we went to operations of matrices basically there are three operations we have addition and subtraction and multiplication so i'll start with addition and subtraction addition So for addition, if you are adding two matrices, let's say uh, they must be of the same order. Let's say E, F, G, H. So basically, what I'll do, I will add the A with the E. Then I will add the B with the F. And then I will add, add the C with the G. And again, I will finally add the D with the H. So even if it, in subtraction, I'll still do the same, same thing. So you add the corresponding element, the corresponding element that is appearing at a particular row, at a particular column. So this one is the first element in the first row, first column A. Then we have the E first row, first column, so that's why we add them. So even in subtraction, we shall still be able to do the same. So give you an example, uh, two, four, one, two. One, two. My word has, my word has done what? It is hanging. I love to start again. My word again had hung. So again, I have to share. Good. But so far, have you been able to understand the, the, but I don't think addition, if you follow the notes clearly, I don't think you'll have a problem. But again, if you have a problem, you'll be able to tell me. So I'll go to, uh, to multiplication. Multiplication, that is where I, I know most of you will have a problem. Some the multiplication of matrices. So if you can only be able to multiply two matrices, let's say A, can only be able to multiply two matrices. Let's say A and B. If this one we have said is given by the order is given M by M by N. The order here is M by N, for example. You can only be able to multiply two matrices if these two are what are equal. What are these? N, that, that is the what, the column of the first matrix is the same as the what, the row, the second matrix. So that's the only time you can be able to multiply two matrices if they have the same order. So for example, I'll be able to give you one. So example number one, two, four, one, 
three six two one two three four five nine so if i go to this matrix first of all i must identify the order so the order of this one the rows are how many these are the rows we have said the rows are the horizontal so this one is a two by three matrix then again, this one, the rows are the ones that you move uh, basically horizontally. This, these ones are marking, these are the rows. These are the rows. So here the rows are row three. And the columns are these ones, columns, columns, columns. So these ones, they are how, how two. So because I have a three and a two, you can be able to see here. I have a three and two, this one and this one. Then it is possible to multiply these two matrices. And if I multiply these two matrices, the final matrix, are you seeing whatever that is left here? Two and two. We shall end up with a two by two or two matrix. This one will be the answer. Two by two ma matrix. So we have the, the order. The order of a matrix can only be multiplied if the number of columns of the first matrix is the same as the number of columns, uh, the number of rows of the second matrix. Can able to give you, uh, uh, tell me if this, it is possible to be able to multiply this one. Let me make my board a bit bigger. So is it possible to multiply this? Tell me which one it is possible to multiply. We start from there. We have this one here. So you can able to tell me which one is possible to multiply. And able to tell me which one is possible to multiply there. Between one and two. Bran, Mani and Michael. Which one do you think is possible? Which one is not? Yes, Brian. Yes, Brian. Uh, okay, money. Okay, money. Uh, Pardon? According, according to the way you described, uh, according to the way you described order of matrices, mm. the first one is not possible to multiply because one of the uh, because it's one one uh, one column and mm. two rows, mm. but not. Uh, and this and the uh, the subsequent multiply the the other one that you're supposed to multiply with it with is mm. two by two, so m and n are not the same. So just give me is it possible to multiply number one, Bran? Bran, is it possible to multiply one? I don't know because <laughs> okay. Two is it is I it possible it is. to multiply two? I think it is. I, I think it is. Okay, Kemani, Kemani, I wanted to say something. Kemani, is it possible to multiply one? Uh, one, it's possible. Two? Not possible. Pardon? But two is not possible. You cannot okay. multiply it. Michael, Michael, Michael? Yeah, I think it's possible to multiply the second one. The first one? Um, no. Okay, let me do it. So the first one, it is very easy. Just go with the order. So this one, this one you can be able to say is a two by two matrix. This one here, the number of rows, this one, there are how many? There are two. And then the number of columns is only one. So we said this one in the middle, this one, the one that I've circled there, they are identical. So possible. So this one is possible to multiply. Bran, have you seen? So you want yes, to yes, this other one, the number, 
Yes, so they are identical, the number of columns and the number of rows. So we should be able to expect a two by one matrix as the final answer. I'll show you later. This other one is a three by three by two. This one is what? The number uh, uh, that is what? Three by two. Here the number is what here? Two by three by three. So again, here in the middle, the one that I've circled, they're identical. So again, it is what? So this one is sorry, this one is, uh, this one is what? Still po possible. So don't, don't, don't look with your eyes. You must be able to do like this, and then you can be able to gauge, be able to multiply. You know, there's a question there. So at least we, we go now to the multiplication. Let's go now to the multiplication now. Multiplication. So if I have a two by two, let's say two, four, four, three, and I'm multiplying with the six, one, two, two, zero. How do you multiply matrices? It is easy. How you do it, you will move from row to column. Move from row to column. Move from row to column. Row column always. Row column always. So this one again, I'll have to repeat. Uh, Ruby, pen. So like, let me give you an example. Do one. Do one, pens. So I've given you, let's say one, you have one, three, five, and zero. You multiply with uh, two. A four, six inch, let's say seven. This one here. So this one is a two by two. Two by two. Basically, two matrices it is possible to multiply because they're identical. It is no problem there. So it's a two by two, and the final answer we should expect still a two by two matrix. So how do you multiply such a matrix? This is how we do it. We, we multiply here the odd. We move from the row, then to the odd to the column for the first entry. So row and then column. So for this one, uh, the first entry will be given by this check. I'll multiply the one uh, times two. Then I add, I multiply now the three times six. That is the first entry there for that, uh, for that uh, element there. The second one, I'll multiply again one times the whole of four and then three times seven. This other one, if I move now to the lower, to the lower one, I'll move to the lower what? To the lower uh, row. So I multiply five times uh, two, again row column plus zero times six. The other one will be what? Again five times four plus zero times seven. This one is zero. So zero times seven times seven. If I do that one correctly, you can be able to see I'm, end, I'm ending up with a two by two matrix that is 18, 20. That is 21 plus 4, 25. That is 10. And then I'll have 20. So always move row, column, going down, row, column. But again, this, this aspect of multiplying matrices, I don't think it is new to you. I think you have come across it before. So I'm just reminding you row, column, row, column. That's why you multiply. Now, the only question will be asked now, what if I interchange the two matrices? Will I get the same, same answer if I, if I interchange? So let us try and see. I have two, four. I interchange the, uh, the two matrices, six, seven, and multiply and see if I'll be able to get the same, same thing. And then uh, one, three. One, three. And then five, zero. Five, zero. Again, I'll do the same, same thing. Row, column, like that. So I multiply two times one plus four times five. And the other one, I'll multiply two times three plus four times zero. And then I'll multiply six, six times one plus this one is seven, uh, seven times five. And then I'll multiply six times three 
that is the six are moving like this on the on the on the second row and then the column uh, 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 three zero and then times seven times zero if i do that one correctly the first entry i'm getting is this one here that is 20 uh, 22 this one was uh, what four times what four times zero this one uh, it was a zero i'll get a six uh, that is 35 plus 6 41 and then 6 times 3 that is 18 so you can be able to see basically i'm getting two different answers the first one is 20 25 10 20. this one i'm getting 22 6 41 totally different totally different values so what i want to say that in in matrices in matrices in matrices a b a b can never be equal to what b a they are not commutative it is not commutative if you go to one of them it is not commutative when you interchange then you get a different answer it's not commutative not commutative at all so that is basically uh, what we were learning at least on on matrix multiplication so uh, uh, anyone with the question so far because i want to do another book just to demonstrate that you can be able to go through the notes and do those examples that are there we multiply this one two four one zero negative one three negative two uh, let's say five and zero we multiply with uh, six one zero two and then negative three then negative four. so I'll, I'll get i'll go to the order this one is a three by three matrix this one is a three by two is it possible to multiply yes you can be able to see so the final answer here when you multiply we should be able to expect a three by two matrix whatever that is remaining we should be able to expect a three by two matrix that will be the final answer so you can easily be able to get what you'll be able to get so let me multiply now these two let me multiply this to I rub what I had here. So we, we go row column, row column, row column. So this one here is a bit lengthy. Is a is is a bit lengthy for sure. So let me just uh, delete the, this one. At least we have seen it is nini. You can you can be able to see the video there. So let me now like that. I hope we'll be able to see that is uh, two four one. Okay. So let's do the pens so we shall go like this and then like that the first the first entry i'll have the first row multiplied by the first column of this matrix so i'll have two two times what two times six plus four times zero plus one times negative three that is the first one then I'll move again with the row and with the whole of the second column. Let me just uh, change a pen. So I'll have again two times one uh, plus four times two plus one times negative four. So again, I'll, I'll move now to the second row. I'll have zero, zero times six plus negative one times zero plus three times negative three uh, the other one i'll have as the, the the second row of the first matrix with the last column there for the second matrix so zero times one plus negative one times two plus three times two then this other one i'm in the final uh, column i'll have negative two times six with the first column uh, last row with the first column plus five times zero and then uh, plus zero times negative three and then now the final one here allow the, the the last row of the first matrix with the second uh, column that is negative two times one plus five times two plus zero times negative four now, if I do this one correctly, uh, that is uh, that is twelve minus three. 
that is nine. First entry there is, is nine. We have a nine. That is a nine. Then uh, that is uh, two, ten, ten minus one, six. We're gonna have it as negative nine. Then this other one I'll have six minus two, four. And I'll have negative 12. And then I'll have uh, six minus two, again four. You can be able to see it is a three by two at ma matrix, the final answer. So always move row, column, row, column, row, column, always. And you will be okay. Row, column, look. So we are, we are back on real analysis. So I, I have to repeat because I was not recording. So we said a function, of, a function f of x on continuity, f of x is continuous at a, at a point, at a point x is equals to a. This is the first definition. If Number one, a f of a exists. What does it mean to exist? Basically, when you replace the value of of a on f of x, you should not get undefined function. You should be able to get a value. Now, the first one, number b, the limit as x approaches a of f of x again must what must exist. This one again must exist. Again, the limit cannot be, it, it must be defined. And then part C, the, the condition A, the condition A, the value you get for condition A has to be the same as the value you get for condition, condition B. The value you get for condition A must be the same as the value you get. Basically, the answer for A and the answer for B, they must at least correspond, they must be equal. So that is the continuity at, at a point. So if a point is not continuous, if it is not continuous, is not continuous, then we say it is what? It is not continuous. Sorry, it is what? It is a, it is, sorry, it is discontinuous, discontinuous. You can say it is not continuous, but you can use a better word. You can be able to say it is what? It is discontinuous is a better word. Now, what makes a function to be not continuous? Let's start from there. What basically is the challenge for a function to be not to be continuous? Basically, the, uh, uh, one thing that makes a function to be discontinuous, a function uh, to be discontinuous is the denominator. Denominator is the one that basically makes most of the functions to be what? Uh, to be discontinuous. So if uh, 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 is the denominator when it is equal to zero. When you have a function that has a denominator, basically most of the time it will not be what? It will, the, the, this discontinuity will be given when you have what? Zero, why? Because we know uh, uh, any number, when you divide any number by zero, any number divided by zero, divided by zero, divided by zero, gives what? Can, can someone try any number uh, divided by zero gives what? Any number divided by zero gives what? Bran. If you have a calc, you can try. Take any number and you divide by zero. The money, you can try. Any number divided by zero, you get what? Mm, okay, the money, I think that's okay. You're getting an indefinite. You get an indefinite. Yeah, so that is, that is the biggest problem because you get what? Undefined answer. Undefined, or what you are calling it what? Error. The color cannot be given to compute. So if, if you don't have a denominator, then most of the functions will be continuous. But when you have a denominator, then most of the function will not be what? Will, be, will not be what? Continuous. Let's do an example here, first of all, for this continuity. 
just just to demonstrate what I've seen. Uh, example. Find value of x where function is where the function where the function f of x is what is continuous so we have number one Find the value of x where our function is discontinuous. f of x is equals to 1 all over x minus 1. So, where do you think that function, if you have gone through the notes, where do you think that function would be discontinuous? So, I'll, I'll do this example. So, basically, for this function to be discontinuous, we are saying that the denominator has to be equal to z to 0. So we equate the denominator to zero, x minus one has to be equal to zero. We are just dealing with the denominator only. Then we are able to get that x is equal to number one. So at x is equal to one, when you replace in that function, you'll be able to get one over zero, and it will be what it is discontinuous. Easy as that. Easy as that. Uh, someone to do for me zero over one. Someone to do me zero over one, because people confuse these two. So not. 0 over 1. Give me that value. We have a calc 0 over 1. 0 over 1. Uh, brand. Brand, are you there? I am here. I am here. Uh, 0 over 1 is equals to zero hello That, you have, that is your main concern. Your main concern will always be the denominator. So it is discontinuous. Uh, it, is, it is discontinuous. When x plus 4 is equal to 0, so x has to be the same as what? Negative 4. Let me, let me do another one here. 3. f of x is equal to 1 all over x squared plus x minus 6. That one there, you can try. It will be discontinuous way. Again, we shall just equate this one to 0. So it is discontinuous when when x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. So this one is a quadratic equation. You need to solve it. So the product here is negative 6. The sum here is 1. Two numbers that you multiply, factors. You multiply to get a negative 6, and when you add, that one will be what? 3 and what? Negative 2. 3 and negative 2. So I'll have x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. So x, x plus 3 minus 2, x plus 3 is equal to 0. So when you saw this one, you'll get first of all x minus 2, and then x plus 3 equals to 0. 
So it can only be discontinuous when what? X minus two is equals to zero, which means that X is equals to two. And the other one is what? X plus three is equals to zero, means that X is equals to negative three. So it is discontinuous at two points. So it is possible for a function to be discontinuous at two places, basically because we have a quadratic equ equation, you just have to be able to solve it. Is it a bit clear that one now? Is it clear basically where functions are discontinuous? Yes, yes, it's clear. Uh, so, so just go to the denominator and uh, your focus will always be there. The denominator, your focus will be there. Is it okay? So yes. let's do another now uh, on continuity now to check if a function is continuous, basically. Uh, okay. Using the three conditions that we have done. Three conditions that we have done. So I'll, I'll do a simple example. So now we are on continuity now. Continuity. So continuity, if, if you are to define continuity, you must be always remember the three conditions. Check if f of x is equals to 2x minus 4 is continuous at what? x is equals to what? x is equals to 4. So if you have been given such a function to check if it is continuous at a particular point, we check the three conditions. So solution, need the three conditions the three conditions three conditions if you want to check the first condition is that f of a must exist now here our a is number four at the particular point so what we need to do is to just find out if f of x is equals to 2x minus 5 can someone find f of 4 that is the point that you have been given f of 4 will be given by what so f of 4 is easy we shall just replace Two times four and then minus five. Correct, you get three. That's the first condition you have checked. Number B now we check now the limits. Limits as x approaches a of f of x. So again, our our a is still what four. So we shall check now limit as x approaches four of our function uh two x minus five. And again, because I gave you some notes on limits, and we have done this one in uh, what? Have we done in what differentiation we have done? You just the limit to just replace where there's an x with four, so we shall get two, four minus five. This one you are getting meters what again? Three. So check now. We we check now if a, a, a and b are corresponding. So since condition one, or sorry, condition a or condition one is equals to condition b, i.e. 3 is equal to 3. Uh, f of x is equal to 2x minus 5 is continuous. It's continuous at x is equal to 4. Basically, most of the functions, the polynomials, when you have just a numerator, most of them, all of them will be continuous. Most are continuous, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to do continuity, Kindly do the three conditions. If you don't do the three conditions, then you are done. Number two, uh, we check if f of x is equals to uh, two or two, three all over x minus two uh, is continuous at x is equals to one. No, sorry, no, that one is easy. Let's say at x is equals to two. Pen. At x is equals to two. So again, now I'll go with the three conditions again. That's what we have. So solution. Check the three conditions. So condition one says what? F of A must exist. Must exist. Must exist. 
So basically, remember our a is what? Our a is equals to two basically. So we shall replace there. So f of two will be given by three. All of our two minus two. So you are getting here three over zero, which will be what? Undefined. So I'll not what? even. Pardon? Undefined is uh, undefined answers do not exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Yes, you can never divide with zero. It doesn't exist. There's no value for that. It's not infinity. It's not negative. Infinity is an answer that is unknown. Is it okay? Yes. So, yeah, because f of a, we have said f of a must exist. So this one is not existing. So we cannot be able to proceed. So it, just just by the fact of the first condition, we cannot be able to continue now. We can't continue because. We had said that the first condition f of a must exist. We must get a quantum a, a, a value that is a, a, that is quantifiable, but it's not quantifiable. So we can easily be able to say, since f uh, f of of two does not exist, it is what it is what this what is continuous. By just that fact, it is discontinuous. So this what this function is is not continuous at x is equals to two because of the undefined nature. But I know any other value when you replace like three, when you replace like four, or when you replace like zero or negative one, you'll get a value. Go and try and see. But uh, categorically, we can be able to say at a point x is equals to two, we are guaranteed by the first condition that we do not get an answer. It is what discontinuous. Uh, number three, f of x is equals to x squared x squared minus x minus six. So x minus three. But x is equals to and x is equals to three. That one there. So let's do this one. So this one. Uh, first of all, I'll check if f of if of a uh, solution if f of a exists uh, exists. So I replace here f of three, the same as uh, three minus three, and then uh, three squared minus three minus six, getting zero over zero. Go to your calculator and give me the value of zero over zero. Give me the value of zero over zero. Money when your mother's son. Money zero over zero. Error. Oh, yes, correct. Uh, there's a student who told me zero over zero is the same as one. You cancel zero and zero. Uh, not really. He always confirm from your calc. So this one again is what? Error. Error from your calc or what? Undefined. So uh, by taking this by taking this one, we can easily be able to say we can easily be able to note that uh, it is what f of a is not existing. We are finding a mass error. But wait, there are some functions that have a removable discontinuity. So we we, we, we don't conclude right away. We we try to see if we can be able to factorize the denominator and try to cancel with the, with the numerator to remove to remove the what the undefined nature. So there are some functions. When you just look, when you replace, you are getting undefined nature. But when you do some mathematical manipulation, if you can be able to factorize the denominator and remove the, the, the discontinuity, then it can still be able to work. Let me, let me pick a call, Kidogo. That have uh, by just the uh, the right replacement. When you replace, you can you easily check they are undefined, but they have a removable discontinuity. Check. Let me explain that x minus three 
check so so what we are saying on direct substitution we are finding it has out it is not it is discontinuous but close inspection if you can be able to remove the discontinuity kindly remove check this one out x squared x squared my pen is failing me uh, x squared minus minus what minus x minus 60. let's say this one can be factorized the product here is what negative 6 the sum here is negative 1. so two numbers factors that one will be when, three. when you when, when you factorize sir yes when you factorize the answer is r x plus 2 and x minus 3. Oh, you already done it. Oh, oh, sour. Let me see. That is uh, which one will be negative here? The three. So you're getting x minus three and x plus two. Okay, correct. X plus two. Okay, sour. So let's re replace. So there are some that uh, don't be in a hurry to judge that they are, they are discontinuous. And my pen is failing me today. So. So this function, we can easily be able to uh, simplify it in a better way so that we, we can be able to remove the discontinuity by having this check this one out. Mm. Yeah, we, had, we had said what it was x minus 3. It was x minus 3 all over x squared minus x minus 6 is the same as x minus 3 all over x uh, minus 3 and then x plus 2 and you can be able to see you can be able to cancel you can be able to cancel at least one of the function they are this one this one and this one there so you're ending up with one all over x plus 2 so if it's possible to remove the discontinuity kindly remove Hey, like like the, the, the this example I've given you this one uh, the number two you could not factorize you could not factorize x minus two that is the the the, the what the simplification that that is the end of the simplification you cannot be able to simplify it. so this one we just replace it but for this other one because we had a quadratic equation you can easily be able to confirm if it is possible to remove some you can be able to remove some you can so now we can be able not to check if now our new function has become f of x is equals to one all over x plus two, if it is what now? If it is continuous at what? At x is equals to what? Three now. Now we have a, a, a simplified function. We see now if it's possible to check for continuity. So I'll check condition one. A, uh, f of a must exist. So you get uh, f of what? f of three. That is 1 all over 3 plus 2. We are getting it 1 over 5. So you can be able to see now we are getting a value. It's, it's no longer undefined. So it's just a matter of factorization. We call, we call them they have a removable discontinuity. The second one, limit. Lib must what? Must exist. Let's get the limit. As x is approaching, is approaching 3, 1 all over x plus 2. Then the same as one all over three plus two, the same as one over five. Now you can be able to see now. Since condition one is equal to C, since part C. Part C. Part C. Part C. We just take that uh, condition one. Condition one, sorry, condition A is equals to condition B. Yes, one over five, the same as one over five. So it is what? It is continuous. It is continuous. This one, it is continuous. So the note there I want you to have is NB. Uh, F of X had a removable. Removable uh, discontinuity. So 
to f of x had a removable d discontinuity f of x had a removable discontinuity f of x had a removable discontinuity so there are some functions and i've given you some on the notes that you can easily be able to go through f of x had a removable discontinuity so it has a removable discontinuity so don't be quick to judge don't be quick to judge a function and see this. Uh, no, no, no. Check if it can be able to factorize and you can be able to remove the discontinuity. So from there, I'll go to piecewise functions, piecewise. So you have said continuity very important. Check for the three conditions. Let's go to the piecewise function. Piecewise function. So we have a piecewise function, let's say f of x. So now we have a piecewise function like this one of x is equals to a. Let's say when x is greater than let's say b, and here c if x is less than b. So this one is called a piecewise function. Basically, it's giving two values of x at two particular points. Two values of x at two particular points. So it's called a piecewise function. And again, it is possible to be able to calculate this. Basically, to check if it is continuous at a particular point. Let me do an example. So let's check if this function is continuous. Uh, f of x is x minus 2, then x is greater than 4, and here 2, then x is less than 4. For example, like that one. So that one is a piecewise function. Is a piecewise function. Is a piecewise function. It's giving two different values of, uh, of f of x at two different points. So how do you check for continuity for that how do we check so again we shall again through the three the three condi condition we are checking for continuity for continuity for continuity so we get the three or the three conditions three conditions are very important very important so uh, i'll start with the first one uh, Condition A, f of A must exist. f of A must exist. So remember now, because we have x is greater than 4, x is less than 4, which I just consider basically our value at what? At x is equals to 4. The value that basically the greater than or the less than doesn't matter. So we shall be able just to investigate if it is continuous at x is equals to 4. When you have x is greater than 5, x less than 5, these two always are similar. They are similar most of the time. They are similar most of the time. So f of a must exist. So how do you, you, how do you check if f of a must exist? Check this condition that I've given you. Let me mark it in yellow. Have you seen this condition here? There. That one there. That one will always give you the f of what? The f, the, the, the f of a. We don't calculate for piecewise function most of the time. We not calculate f of what f of a. What we just need is to come and you just come and read it from from the piecewise function here. The f of a you just read it. Now the other one that I'm marking in what this one here. I'm marking in purple this one. The first one here is the one that we shall be able to use the limit. Do you remember the second condition, the limit? This one we shall be able to assist us to be able to calculate now the limit. So if you have a constant. Consider it as f of what? As f of a. The, the function uh, will be able to assist us to get the what? The limit. So this one, I can easily be able to come and say, check this one out. I'll do another example. Bear with me. So I can easily be able to just come and say that f of 4 is equals to 2. Where am I getting the 2? The 2 is here. The 2 is there. I'm just reading it from there. You just read it. And you can be able to see my f of x is a piecewise function. is given by that. So you just read it, read it from there. So bear with me, 
I'll be able to do another example. Now, we have said the other one, for the limit, we use the first, the first condition. So limit must exist. So let's go back to the piecewise function and see the first one, what we have. We have x minus, x minus two. So we have x minus two, x is greater than four. So I'm saying the first condition there, x minus two, will be able to assist us to get the limit. So let us do that one now. We shall be able to get as limit as x is approaching four of x minus two. The same as four minus two. The same as what? Two. See, condition one, sorry, condition A is equals to condition B, i.e. two is equals to two. Hence, we can easily be able to say it is what? It is continuous. It is continuous. So again, I'll repeat that uh, for the what? For the, for the piecewise function, the function x minus two will be able to assist us to get the limit. And the two, you just read it as now the f of a, the one that we are looking must exist. That is just condition number number one. Uh, at least the, the, you can be able to hear the rest are understanding from where we started. So I'll do another example of the piecewise function. Number two, we have a piece. This one is called a piecewise function because it is giving uh, two different values for. I can even have three different values, but I'm just giving you a simple one. Uh, no, let me. I wanted to nullify uh, something. Let me use another one. I want to nullify something. Mm that uh, that uh, Mwangi said we can have 4 minus 5x mm, x is greater than negative 2 14 and x is less than negative 2. this one is a piecewise function is given two particular values. Okay, let me nullify now what Mwangi had said. So I'll start first of all here. Uh, we take for the three conditions. There are three conditions for continuity. We have already covered that one. So the three conditions, the first one, we have said that f of a must exist. Must exist. What is our f of a? Our a here, our a, a is x is equal to number what? To number negative two. We ignore the, 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 the less than or the greater than. So you just take, you can be able to see these values that I'm circling are identical. So you just take that one, be the same as A. Is it okay? So, uh, Banamwangi, uh, I want you to tell me what is our F of negative two? Our F of negative two is what there? Mwangi, our F of negative two is what? The F of negative two will be 14. All right. So don't say the, the I, I said the first function. I said the, the one that has a co a constant. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, the one that has a constant. Yes, the one that has a constant is the one that we take directly as what? 14. Then now, number B, the second function that has a function, we shall be able not to calculate now the limits. Limit must exist. Must exist. We shall now be able to calculate now the limits as x is approaching what? Negative two or four minus five x. This one you'll get it four minus five times negative two. You're getting it this one as what? 14. So since uh, condition A and condition B are rhyming, number C, uh, since uh, condition, condition A is equals to condition B, to condition B, i.e. what? 14 is equals to 14. What is since? 14 is equals to 14. The function is what? Conti? Continuous. The function is continuous at x is equals to negative 2. So that is the conclusion. So do what we are doing on continuity. Uh, we were doing three, three conditions. Three conditions. I'm hoping at least the video will be able to assist you. It's still the notes, you can be able to go through them and they, you'll be able to get it. Let me do the final example. Number C. Uh, f of x 
is equals to uh yeah, I, I want you to do this one uh six plus uh, 2x and this one is uh, x uh is less than one here x is greater than one and then here we have try that one check if that one is continuous check that one if it is continuous it's not hard so correct yeah. correct correct it is not so number a we are taking the first condition f of a must exist must exist remember our a here is what number one whatever we have here a is equals to number one whatever we have on the right hand side of that function so we shall just take just f of what f of one here is what the the function that is a constant seven just seven we don't calculate that one then number b we calculate now the limit must exist it must exist how do we calculate the limit so we shall have lim a lim as x is approaching what of one remember our x is equals to one we have one on the right hand side of x plus two x x plus two x so we shall just replace the one there so two one we get this one as what well, eight and you can easily be able to say the first condition the condition condition a is what condition a is not equal to what condition b why because seven can never be equal to what to eight so you can be able to say that f of x is what discontinuous is discontinuous at x is equals to what one that is the final conclusion that we need to do that f of x is discontinuous at x is equals to one aya mwangi and kemani uh, just corresponding together so community using the delta and epsilon language f of x minus f of a magnitude is less than uh, epsilon whenever x minus a is less than delta where we are saying uh, that what that uh, delta and epsilon are small values that are greater than zero so let's confirm so we need to prove you are, you are proving so example i'll do an example if you have a problem next week you'll be able to tell me example 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 you can be able to follow the previous example it was not hard number one you check if f of x is is equals to uh to 2x is continuous is continuous at x is equals let's say to one at x is equals to one so first of all here i'll need to to identify my a what will be my a there very important our a one so yes a is one so a is one so from the definition let me go back to the definition again the magnitude of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon whenever x minus a is less than what delta so what we don't have is our f of a remember our f of x we have been given so we need to get our f of a so how do we get our f of a we get f of a from where from f of x so f of x let me rub here for clarity so our f of x here we have been given this function here uh, pens so our f of x is what our f of x is what is a uh, 2x which means that our f of what a our a is what is one the number one that you have been given is the same as what two times one is the same as what two so just replace the value of a which is one on the function we'll get it as number two so i can be able to replace everything here so our f of x is what f of x is what 2x 2x what is 2x minus our a is 2 is less than uh, epsilon implies that what x minus what x minus 1 is less than delta we have said our a is 1 
So I've been able to replace basically uh, the value of f of a. You can be able to see here, the one that I'm circling, this one is my f of a here. I've been able to replace there. I've been able to replace there my f of a, which is two. Now we need a relationship between the and the epsilon. So what we need to do when you have a function here, mostly on the right hand side, you'll not be simplifying on the delta. We normally simplify on the epsilon. So Bonamwangi, what are we doing there? When you reach there? Mwangi? If you, you calculate the magnitude of f of a and f of x. No, no, no. You don't calculate the magnitude. You fact, factorize, where, where? You factorize. Oh, eh. We want something that is close to x minus a. So I'm, I'm trying to, to have a function here on the epsilon that is that is almost the same as this one here, the one that I'm circling, x minus a. So I factorize, so I'll factorize that remain with two, x minus one, magnitude is less than epsilon, never x minus a. Remember, I want to show a relationship between delta and epsilon. So from there, we, we say that we can be able to distribute the magnitude on the two, and then we distribute the magnitude on the x minus one, it's less than delta, is less than x minus one, less than epsilon. From there, the magnitude of two, we said, well, the magnitude of a positive number, we remain what we, last, last class I said, if a, or the magnitude of, of a is a, the magnitude of negative a becomes po positive. I said like that in the previous class. So for any negative number, it becomes positive. For every positive number, it remains po positive so this one can be given by 2 x minus 1 is less than delta which implies that x minus 1 is less than what epsilon now i want to uh, check this one out i want on the right hand side here let me here i want here to remain with what i want to remain with x minus 1 alone i don't want the the the, the what I, I don't want the 2 so that at least i can be able to do what i can be able to compare with this other one x minus 1 so what can I be able to, to do to the two so that I remain with x minus one? Anyone? What can I be able to do with the two? Because I don't want, I want to remain with x minus one here. What can I be able to do with the two? No one. So anyone wants to try? Yes? Repeat your question. I'm asking. I want to remain with the magnitude of x minus one. I don't want the factor of two. What can I be able to do to remove these two? Where have you divide, both, you divide both sides by two so that the x x minus one mm -hmm. is, is less than epsilon divided by two. So, so this one basically will come here. So I'll have the, the magnitude of x minus one is less than over two, which implies that x minus one is less than the delta. Now check this one out. Now I have similar. Let me let me circle this one. I have similar things now. At this side, I have the same function. That was my goal. Again, I have this function that are corresponding. So they are corresponding. So magnitude of x minus one is less than delta over two. The magnitude of x minus one is still less than delta over two. What can we say about the delta over two? Uh, uh, sorry, the epsilon over two and the delta. What can we be able to say? We have similar things on the left hand side. What can we be say? What can we say about the delta over two and the what? And the uh, sorry, epsilon over two and the delta. I want to hear from Kemani. Mwangi, please, if you are there in the last class, you can just name Kemani. What can you be able to tell me about those two? Because all of them have the same thing on the on the left hand side. So this one can only signify that delta has to be the same as epsilon over two. And we have shown a relationship between delta and epsilon. So hence, hence our function what f of x is equals to was it two x is continuous at what x is equals to two. If you just show the relationship, then you are okay. Just show the relationship, then you are okay. I'll do another example here. Number two, f of x is equals to x squared when x is equals to what when x is equals to let's say four we do that one there so i'll go to the definition f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon whenever x minus a is less than delta 
So here my A here is what? Four. So I, what I need is to calculate F of A and I have F of X. So F of X is equals to X squared. So F of, uh, of four is the same as what? Four squared is the same as what? 16. So I can be able to replace everything there. So I have F of X. So the F of X, we know the value of F of X is what? X squared. The value of f of x is x squared, so we have x squared minus 16 it's less than epsilon whenever on the delta we don't mostly for the time we don't see minus four. That is my main task. So check this one out. This one is a uh, is a uh, the difference of two two squares. This one is very famous. Can be given as x plus what four x minus four. It is very close. It is a difference of two squares when you have a minus. So you can be able to have now x plus four and then x minus four is less than epsilon. Whenever x minus four less than delta. I can be able to distribute the, the magnitudes. So x plus four. Whenever x minus four is less than delta. Previous example, you said we cannot be able to bring, so avoid. Let me put here something. You can, we cannot be able to bring to make them identical. We bring this one here, this side here, there. You divide, no, 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 no. So avoid that. You avoid that. Why? You can only bring constants. You want to show the, a relationship between delta and the epsilon in form of a constant. So when you re, when you take that function there, it is still remain as a function. You have not shown a relationship. So how do you do this one? How do you do this one? What we do, I'll be able to use the delta here. Are you seeing here the delta? This one is the one that I'll be able to use the delta to be able to come and solve for x plus is four. So use, we shall use what we have there x minus we shall use uh, x minus 4 is less than delta uh, to solve to solve for what to solve for the magnitude of x plus 4 because x minus 4 uh, x minus 4 this one here the one that i'm circling here in blue yeah the one that i'm circling in blue already that one is okay it is corresponding with this one the problem is what? Whatever I'm circling in green, x plus 4. That's what you want to eliminate this one. That one I've circled in red, the one that you want to eliminate. So the only thing I can be able to do is to use the delta for me to be able to come and uh, solve for x plus 4 so that I replace there with a, co with a constant. So how do I do that? I will just pick a value of delta. My word is, is not responding, so let me wait. Oh, it is okay now. So I'll pick a, a, a value of delta, a, a very small of a value of delta, uh, a very small value of delta. Just pick a delta. Value, uh, value of delta for me to be able to that. Uh, I'll assume that delta is less than or equal to, to one. So I'm just picking a value. In other examples that I've given, I've picked a different value of delta. So I can able to, to say, let, uh, let x minus four delta be less than or equal to one. So I've picked a very small value of, of delta. So I'm assuming delta is greater than zero, but it is less than or equal to, to one. So this one signifies that what? X minus four is less than or equal to, to one. I'm able to go with that one. X minus four is less than delta. So remember, I'm solving this one to assist me to eliminate uh, the magnitude of X plus four. So how, how are we solving this one? Basic maths, these, these, are, these are two inequalities in one. So the first one is positive X minus four is less than or equal to one. Someone can be solving that one. The second one is negative X minus four Sorry, these are brackets. So these are, are brackets. Sorry, these are brackets. X minus four is less than or equal to one. So we need to solve for those two, the positive one and the negative. So the positive one has no problem. So we shall end up with what? 
we shall end up with this one is easy this one will end up with the uh, when you open up with a positive will end up with x minus 4 uh, is less than or equal to delta when you solve this one you'll get x is what x is what less than what five five okay, okay, okay. this other one when you open up this is what you'll get you'll get negative x plus four is less than what one so I can I can take the x this other side. So I'll have x is less than what? When the one will cross over, it shall become what? Three. Four minus one, three. So remember, hey, what we are learning in basic maths, they were to prepare us. So this one I can be able to combine it into two, into one. X is less than uh, five. X is greater than what? Three. So I'll be able to have that one there. Always the bigger function, uh, the five will always be on the right hand side. So I've been able to solve for that one. So remember, I said I, I picked a delta to assist me to so uh, to for me to be able to do what to solve for what this one here. I'm I'm not yet there, so I want to solve for the magnitude of x plus four. So I can easily be able to say when I have the magnitude, I can be able to do this. My board has ended. When I have the magnitude, I can easily be able to come and say, uh, now I'll have to introduce a new board. So. I, I'm hoping that we are there. X is there. I have to, re to delete all this. I need to get another board. So this is where we are. We are at uh, three is less than X is less than five. This one was to assist us to solve what? To solve for this one. So we need to solve for this one x plus 4 in form of a constant that's what we wanted to solve x plus 4 so what i'll do the one i have here i have x plus 4 magnitude now what i'll do for this function check what i'm doing for this one what i'm doing uh, i remain here with the 5 i will remain here with the 3 but you can be able to see i've added here 4 the one that i'm circling so i've added here 4 here remember i'm, I'm just a uh, nini i've taken the x let, 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 let me do in a better way so at least you can be able to understand. I write the way it was before, and then I leave her. So check this one out. This is what I, I had. So I want to solve for that one. So I have what? Less than uh, x, less than 5, less than 3. Get up there. Now in my function, I have magnitude. So when, I, when you have magnitude, you're, al you're allowed to do this. So what I'm doing, I'm adding here plus 4. What I'll do, I'll just do, I'll add here 4, and I'll, I'll add here what 4, only that. So the, the same same thing I had, then you add 4 and you add 4, both sides. so you'll end up with 7, it's less than what? Money is less than or equal to magnitude of x plus 4, which is less than or equal to what? And that is what? 9. And I'm comfortable with that. So it is easier that you just add uh, this one on, on the right and on the left. Just add on the right and on the on and on the left, and you will be okay. So there now I can be able to pick one value that I want. I can be able to pick a value that I want. I can be able to pick now this the, the biggest value. So I can be able to say that x plus four is less than or equal to or to nine, because remember it, it is a value that is between seven and nine. So I can be able to pick the biggest value. So when I had x plus four, I will replace with what nine. Where I had x plus four. I'll be able to replace with this. So when you have this one, add plus four on the right, add plus four on the on the left, and you are done. And in the middle again, you put now the ma the magnitude. Again, allow to re to do this one. So I'm almost now finishing. Let's go to where we were now. Where we were. We, where we were. So this is what we had. We had what magnitude of x plus four. Magnitude of x minus 4 was less than epsilon whenever x minus 4 was less than delta. Then we have done the, uh, we, we have been able to solve the, the, the inequality, and you have discovered that x plus 4 uh, is less than or equal to what, to 9. So we have said we shall pick what, x plus 4 is equal to what, to 9. We're just picking that value. So instead of this one, we shall be able to have a 9 x minus 4 less than epsilon whenever x minus 4 is less than delta. 
So this one can be able to come here. Now I have a constant. Now a constant can be able to come there. So x minus 4 is less than epsilon. Whenever that x minus 4 is less than delta, epsilon over 9. You can easily be able to say that delta is the same as epsilon over 9. And you can easily be able to say it is what? It is continuous at x is equals to 4. So my summary here is we use the delta to be able to come and remove the x class 4. Basically, the one that you don't want. Always use the delta, choose a, a smaller value. Uh, there's another example that I've picked even data to be have to be able to assist me. And then you can easily be able to solve. Yes. Anyone with a question so far? Uh, you can be able to